Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. So we've had some episodes in the past, and you guys know my opinion on manifestation and idolizing these external factors to gain notoriety, riches, and all of these earthly things. And you know that I don't stand for that. I believe that if we are, if we have anything, it's through God and his blessings on us and, you know, the rewards for our hard work and our dedication, especially when we are following Christ and serving him. So I had the great fortune to interview with Tara Malarkey on her show, the High Ticket Empress podcast, right? Is that the name of the podcast, Tara? No, it's Seven it's Figure Coach. Seven Figure Coach. That's right. Mm -hmm. Your business is the high high ticket empress. But mm -hmm. okay. So anyway, sorry about that, listeners. I got confused. But mm -hmm. we, um, I had the great opportunity to interview with her on her show. And she shared with me during that time how she had been in the new age, I guess, woo woo slash manifestation, like all of that stuff. Off and really entrenched in it and had an experience and, and Jesus brought her back to the good side, <laughs> shall we say? Yeah. Um, and um, through scripture, she's really grown and really changed her life um, as she grew her business. And so we're going to talk about that today and really dive into how God calls us to, to act and to do, but most importantly to trust. And that has really been Tara's journey over the past couple of years. And I'm really excited to have her share that with you just to give a little more foundation and um, I guess more factual basis to my opinions and the huh. other episodes that I've done, the blog post I've written about it and tapping into the scriptural resources. So I'm going to invite Tara on, but I do encourage you to go look at the show notes after the show, because there are previous episodes and one in particular, where I really brought forth a lot of scriptures related to this topic. So check out the show notes afterwards so that you can read more, learn more, and really rely on those scripture verses too, especially if you are feeling any sense of conflict in regards to what we talk about today. All right. Without further ado, Tara Malarkey, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thanks, Robin. Super excited to be here. Super excited to have you. Uh, we really connected when we had our conversation on your show, and I am honored that I had that opportunity to have that conversation with you, but I'm even more honored that I get to share your perspective and your journey with my listeners to encourage them to stay aligned with their faith, but really and truly trust in what God is bringing them to and asking them to step into. And I think you're a great example of doing just that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks so much. Excited to share about it. Um, yeah, everything I do now is really to glorify him. So yeah, it's remarkable. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got to this point. Okay. Well, where do you want me to start? That's a huge question. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So you've always been a successful entrepreneur and, or for many years, you were a successful entrepreneur, but you did go down that path. And I know you had some trauma and some other things that led you to probably seek the more mm -hmm. new age way of life. So mm -hmm. maybe start there and then we can talk about how that influenced your business and then what's happened to your business since you really became a follower of Christ and, and changed mm -hmm. your life around. Yeah. I mean, that could be the whole podcast. So I'll just take over from here. <laughs> okay. here we go. Um, so it just, as you were speaking there, it made me think about a post that I did this, this morning, um, asking people to uh, comment if they have a new age to Jesus testimony, because I see so many more women sharing about how uh, they've come to know the truth of Christ and they've given their lives to Christ. And I think that the coaching industry and the um, new age uh, world are very intertwined. And um, I believe there's a few reasons for that. So I'll share that. But one of the comments 
that happened on that post this morning was um, a Christian woman saying that she was so distraught because someone that she's been friends with for many years, who's a Christian woman has just recently started, um, you know, talking about manifestation and crystals and tarot and astrology and um, just all of the things within the new age. And, um, and so I thought, wow, that's so interesting, right? Because I don't, I don't hear that very often. But I understand it because it's what happened to me. So I grew up Catholic. Um, and I think that there were no shade on Catholicism, but I think there were a lot of things missing within uh, Catholicism for me that I was seeking. I was always a seeker. Like I was reading the Bible when I was a child. I know it's kind of strange, but you know, like I, I God had a hold on me from very, very, very early. Um, and I think that there were just, there were just things I went to Catholic school. My mom was devout, devout Catholic. Like she went to mass every day. And then when I came into my teen years, I just rebelled, you know, and I, I didn't want to follow the rules and uh, what I thought were such restrictions. <laughs> um, and, and so like the new age, that world was sort of coming up at that time. Now, new age is as old as time. Okay. So like it has always been around um, in Jesus's time and before Jesus's time, you know, people were uh, celebrating other gods. And so there's scripture around this that God warns us not to do this, right? Because mm -hmm. God is the creator of the universe. And so um, the thing is that the new age or these other gods are really uh, like Lucifer or the enemy or the opposite of what God represents, the devil, if you will, right? However mm -hmm. you want to say it. And the devil, as proclaimed in scripture as well, is the great deceiver. Mm -hmm. And so it, new age is prime for people who are spiritual seekers because it, it masquerades as love and light. Like you'll hear all the new age people use those words, love mm -hmm. and light love and light, like, you know, when you are following these teachings, uh, you are wanting good, right? Like you're, you're, you're not like, I mean, usually, of course, there's a whole underground, you know, who knows doing like dark rituals, but that's not most new age people, right? They're just like, oh, the law of attraction. Okay, cool. Let me just like manifest my desires. And Mm -hmm. On the surface, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that. So that's how it is just very deceiving and it gets a hold of people and it doesn't seem bad, right? Like no, I wasn't bad. I didn't want to do bad things. Um, and so it, it just seemed like it was harmless to me. And that's what I started just following, you know, it felt good, um, it, it takes away any restrictions on life, right? Because all is okay. <laughs> like anything that you are, anything that you feel is okay. And um, yeah, maybe partly if you come from some childhood trauma, which most people have something, um, mm -hmm. or you have something you haven't worked through, um, it's going to feel good. It's going to feel good to say like, oh, you shouldn't ever um, feel bad about something you did because you're human and everything's fine. Right. Like, um, so there's just ways in which it really appeals, of course, to the fleshy part of you that wants everything to be okay and nothing is bad and nothing bad is going to happen to you. And there is no bad or evil or devil or enemy coming after you. Um, that's what you believe. Um, and so, yeah, I went down that path for many years. I started my coaching business that way. I had some success and then I would lose it. And then I'd have some success and then I would lose it. And I can go into the reasons for that, you know, but I don't want to go on too long um, until, you know, he got a hold of me and, and saved me from all of it. I think it's fascinating. And I really do think it's important to note, Tara, that, I mean, you mentioned so many things that I want to touch on, but, you know, First and foremost, that Satan, the enemy, whatever you want to call him, the devil, when we see people luring people into these, this is all him. He's deceiving you thinking oh. that this is, this is wonderful. This is going to be so perfect. And you're going to have everything you ever wanted by doing these things. Mm -hmm. You know, the tarot cards, the crystals, all of these things that are supposed to bring you all of this wealth and all of these good things. 
But we have to go back and remember that Christ didn't call us for all of this. He called each and every one of us and gave us each unique purposes to dive into and use for his glory. Like you said, now you're living for his glory. And I think it's really important to note that, that when you're living, following these other, I guess, for lack of a better word, right? Idols, um, you know, if you're using tarot cards or you're using crystals, or you're doing all of these things to tap into your future and your security for the future, you're idolizing what these things are telling you and guiding you towards. And that's not trusting in God or the Holy Spirit. But the other so, thing I want, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I just want to like, cause I think this will be really valuable. Like I still know what it's like. And I think you, you, you said on my show, right. You, you weren't in, really in the new age. You just know of people who, um, who follow it, who got lost in it. Right. And so, so when I'm sitting here and I hear you, I can put myself back in new age and tell you what I would be thinking about what you're saying and why it doesn't apply to me. Right. Like exactly mm -hmm. you're coming from a Christian perspective or a biblical perspective or a scriptural perspective that I know now, but at that time, you know, you're telling me that I should know that I should be living to glorify God. And I was like, who says, who says, yes. right. Do you right. know what I mean? But it's, that's it's, the deception. It, that's totally, the deception. totally. But it's like, that's why I feel so, um, I feel so um, like, like I have such a desire to talk about this because I know what a new age person is thinking, right? Mm -hmm. I know the arguments that say, well, I don't really care what scripture says, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I, it doesn't mean anything to me. Um, and so that's, what's interesting about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fascinating. And, and, you know, with everything in life, I think we can fall into the trap of deception when, when we sit in a place yeah. of doubt and fear, instead of trusting God to take action in our business or to do the mindset work, to, yeah. to heal our mind, to heal our trauma, or to heal relationships and forgive. It's the same thing. You know, Satan's got a hold of our brain and is saying, oh, you don't need that or, oh, do this instead. And, you know, we're human and we are all, we all as humans want that instant gratification. Mm -hmm. We want the comfort and the soothing and all of these things that sometimes being a Christian is hard. It's not always easy, but God didn't call us to be Christians because it was going to be easy. When you look at his walk on earth, when you look at his disciples walk on earth, they suffered. And but they did it all for his glory. And I think that's something that we oftentimes as Christians forget, like we're not here. And just because we're Christians, it's all going to be smooth sailing. We're <laughs> still going to have struggles. We're still going to have doubts. We're still going to have fear. We're still going to have illness. We're still going to have, you know, traumatic experiences. But the beautiful thing is we have hope at the end of the day. And I think that's what's so cool. Yeah. So two things, um, the interesting thing is when you're in the new age, you, you kind of believe what you are following is going to keep you away from bad things happening. Mm -hmm. And um, that doesn't happen. Right. So right. it's a lie. And, and the only reason that you get to know that is over time when things don't always go well. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you are not shielded because you practice the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, that doesn't, it works. It does work, right? Let's just not, it does work, but it doesn't work, work. Like right. it's not, it's not absolute. Yeah. Um, it's temporary. Mm -hmm. It's like a little carrot, you know, being dangled and then you get the carrot, but the carrot's gone then. So um, the other thing, yeah. The other thing I just want to mention is I think one of the reasons that most people feel God is because they have father wounds because they didn't have an earthly experience of trusting mm -hmm. a human, especially a man at such a deep level. And I think this is very current for the time we're living in that the idea of trusting a loving father that really knows me, knew me before I was formed, like purposely created me and has a purpose for my life and wants to hear my struggles today 
and wants a relationship with me and really knows how to care for me, like not abuse me, is so foreign to most people. Let's face it, right? To most people, they haven't had this earthly experience. And if you haven't had the earthly experience, it's very hard to conceptualize a spiritual father that you've never seen, you know, especially if you haven't grown in your relationship with him to hear him and to know that he's there. It's very hard to trust that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. And okay. So this brings us to what you said and let's talk about this, how everything was temporary. So you'd have great success and then it would falter and then you'd have success again, but then it would disappear. Like it was just this, the ebb and flows, but no consistency. And I think that's something as Christians, we're blessed to have the, the hope, um, of consistency. Like we don't have to fear we're ever going to be completely alone or completely isolated. We always have, we always have that hope that Jesus is right there alongside of us. Right. But when you're talking about the, in the new age and how that consistency is lacking, you, you'd build something, but that didn't mean it was going to last forever. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's exactly scripturally what the Lord warns us of, which is pursuing flesh type um, things. Cause that's really all, you know, like that's really all you're pursuing in the new age is like, Oh, the money is going to make me happy like the bigger business or the car, the person, the man, the family, like whatever. Um, And not, not like any of those things are bad. And God doesn't say any of those things are bad. Um, But the pursuit of them above the pursuit of him, like will lead you in an empty circle, right? Like you have no foundation. I think that's the biggest thing that changed for me. Um, At least initially was just like starting to realize like, I was on quicksand, you know, I would get some footing and I'd like make my way out and up. And then I was on no strong foundation. Like I was just faking it. And everyone in the new age, you know, pretty much is just faking it. They're just trying to convince themselves. Okay. I just need to like say this and like think this way. And then this is going to happen and visualize this. And, and then they get that. And then realize, oh, I'm not, I'm not happy. And so you, you start to sink again, like internally, right? Like mentally and spiritually, that just feels really unsettling for me. I'm very grateful that I didn't have any, uh, really strong mental or spiritual attacks. Like a lot of people in the new age that I know have come to know Jesus. They have had very strong demonic attacks. Um, like insomnia, can't sleep, like being pretty much being attacked. Like they feel like they're dying in their sleep and they can't wake up. Um, and so they, I think in the new age, you just don't realize how much you, you, you're just following like the, um, like Satan's scheme, you know, to lead you so far away from the truth, from the truth. And you're not on any foundation. The thing is, like you said, as a Christian things, you could have some success and then you can lose some, and then you can have some and you can lose some. The thing is that is life though, right? Like Mm -hmm. you can have a lot of great things and then you can lose them. Um, you, you learn to practice that like none of these things matter. This is temporary. We're here for a purpose. We're here to live out, um, his purpose for our life while we're here and nothing fleshy can be put above him because it is temporary and it's not going to last, you know, so you don't put your happiness nor your peace, um, in those things, you know, Mm -hmm. and when you have dark, excuse me, dark moments, you, you know, are practiced to go to him, you know, Mm -hmm. and And when you're in the new age, you have a dark moments and you don't have anywhere to go. You don't know anywhere to go. And that's, that's the sad and crazy thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really is, is fascinating and it it drives me crazy. One of my pet peeves is how people say, 
oh, you know, the universe is bringing me this, or the universe is telling me this, or the universe gave me that. And I'm like, who created the universe? (laughs) You know, and it's, it's funny to me, but when you, when you talk about that, and when we look at it as, you know, God didn't say that money was bad. God said the love of money is bad. Mm -hmm. So when you think of going down this new age track, you're going down the new age track to call in money, to call in things, to call in people. And those become the idols that, and and it is that love of those things that then supersedes your relationship with Christ. And that is where the problems come in to play. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you put, you're essentially putting your trust in those things to fulfill you, Mm -hmm. right? Like husband, house, car, money, trips, like whatever, you know, and you are thinking, you know, that those things are going to fill you up when you get them. And then they don't. And that's the trick of it. That's how the, the enemy works so sneakily because it does seem like it will fulfill you Mm -hmm. and you got to work hard to get it and then you get it and then you realize oh no this is empty too you know and like we have just proof like we have proof of this everywhere I love what God is doing on the planet right now because we see so many um celebrities and people like you know coming and like having a testimony that's like and all the money and then what like I was lost you know turning to drugs or turning to alcohol or turning to porn or turning to affairs or turning like all the things right that we think are going to make us happy and they don't they Mm -hmm. don't yeah whereas when you're rooted in Christ you have a sense of peace no matter how bad things get you can always find something to be grateful for when you get bad news, but you can think, oh, but up until this point, I've had all this, or I've had, you know, so many great experiences, or I've had so much security. And I know that because of this all happening before, he's going to carry me through this too. Mm -hmm. And it's that sense of never feeling alone, I think that is just so comforting. Like, you know, it's like the extra pep in your stuff when you're walking the dog, it's like, oh, I have joy because I know I don't have to worry. Whereas I think, you know, you, from what you've said, you, you, you walk into this new age ideology and you're, everything's going to just happen for you and to you, and you don't have to worry about it. But then the reality hits that, oh, snap, everything's not here. I do have to worry. (laughs) And you don't have anybody to shift that worry too, you know, like we can shift all our worry to God and he invites us to do Mm -hmm. that. Whereas when you don't have him and you just have these things, they don't replace that. They don't take that worry. They don't give you that sense of confidence and security that we have through our faith. It doesn't fill you up, you know, just, it doesn't fill you up. It's like, um, you can love a glass of wine, but too much wine will make you sick. It's the same mm-hmm. thing, right? Yeah, like yeah. nothing else is going to fill you up. You can try, you know? Um, and I, I just wanted to add to what you just said, like, yes. And for me, especially having um, some childhood like challenges growing up in a family with like divorced parents, um, some emotional abuse, some, um, you know, my parents having, um, alcoholism and things like that. Um, the role that I took to, to survive, which many, many people do is to control. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it was really like more about that for me. Um, it's just like the new age I was in control. I'm the God of my life. There is no one else in control. It's like, I'm co-creating with the universe. So it's up to me and I know how to work hard. (laughs) So, so just tell me what to do and I'll do it. 
right? And mm-hmm. so then I'm like making things happen. And that's what I know how to do. So it's like completely foreign, this idea that I have a father who loves me and is my anchor and has got me, is going to provide all my needs. And I don't have to work so hard. Like it's not, um, it's not only up to me, you know? Like I get to surrender it all to him and yeah, he's going to have me do things. Like I have to take action and I have to do some things like in those times of struggle. Now I get to go like father, Holy spirit, Jesus, like, please show me what your will is. I only want to follow what your will is, not my will. And I do trust you that you will take care of this. I put it in your hands because I want the best outcome. And my outcome is not usually the best outcome, you know, or it may not be the best outcome. Like you do know better. You, you have seen my whole life, you know, the end from the beginning. So I trust you. Like, that's what you said. And your promises are true. Um, and so like, there's a surrender and a relaxation and a healing in that, that most people need. That's why I'm so passionate about sharing about it. Right. It's just like that alone. When you understand that it just, heals so much of what people are trying to find in the external. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what would you say, Tara, to someone who is seeking? Like you said before, at the very beginning, that you were a seeker and being a seeker is what led you into the new age. And I'm just curious, like if you had someone, you know, if you knew someone was a seeker, what would you say now? Well, um, it depends like if they're in the new age, I, I would say I was at a church connect group the other night. And actually it was interesting because the host's brother just happened to be there with his wife from like, they were visiting from Long Island, but they weren't there as part of our church group. They just like were visiting their house and they like stayed and listened to us worship and pray. And then after he just like the man felt called to like, tell us that, you know, he has this like ambivalent relationship with God and he's not sure about it all. And, um, and so we all prayed with him and pretty much the first thing, you know, that I would say, and that I said is to just ask him to reveal himself to you. Like, um, like almost just like create some space. Like if you're a seeker and you're listening to this, right. And you want to know the truth. You're just like, I don't know. I don't know if what they're saying is true. I don't know if what I've been following is true. And all these other gurus on Instagram tell me that this is true, right? Like what is true. Then I just say, ask God to tell you, Mm -hmm. you know, and he will. Like he will, you just have, you know, just listen, just watch. Um, he will, he will do it. Yeah. And this, this episode, this conversation may be, may be exactly what you're supposed to be hearing right now. If that is you and you are, you know, seeking those answers or seeking for that guidance, this, this episode may be exactly what God wanted you to hear today in this moment at this time. Um, yeah. So Tara, reveal to us, if you would, because I love this story of how you recognized that it was time to leave the new age and that God was calling you out of that. Yeah, um, it really happened in an instant. Um, So everyone has a different story, which is so interesting. For me, it happened, well, of course, over time, like God was pursuing me and I didn't know it. so the other thing is like, you, you have to trust his timing, but like, if you are listening to this and you are seriously, like, I want to know, right. Like then you could be right there and he's what ready to show you. Um, I know that probably all my years in the new age, he was pursuing me and showing me. Um, but I, I didn't have ears to hear and eyes to see at that time. You know, I wasn't like, there was no part of me that was seeking an alternative truth at that time. Like I thought I had found the truth. In fact, new age people think they're superior to Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, new age people think that they know better and that um, Christianity is so old. It's like past this time, you know, and they need to get on with it. (laughs) So 
I laugh. It is very serious, but I find that really funny and so ignorant, you know, but yeah. I was one of those yeah. people, like, cause I remember seeing, uh, at times, you know, people post about Jesus and I'd be like, oh, come on, you know? Um, so yeah, I was, um, I was sort of like celebrating all the goddesses. I was in the yo yoga and like meditation world as well. Um, and I felt very strongly about, yeah, like celebrating female um, gods and goddesses, which is like that comes from Hinduism mm -hmm. um, and Buddhism. And that was a big part of my world in the new age you know, and I lived in India for a while. And so, um, I was really in it. Um, Mary Magdalene though, um, she came in really strongly into my life in, as part of that, there's a whole like underground Mary Magdalene, like new age, uh, like there's books about how she was his Jesus's partner, but that the Bible excommunicated her from this role. And so I read all those books and um, I believed that at the time, right? Because it goes toward that storyline, which is like that women weren't respected and like, why weren't women also honored as priests and powerful and all of this stuff. And so that really, of course, in my feminist mindset at that time, um, you know, really resonated with me. Um, and then in as part of reading uh, one of those books is based in the south of France, which w is where, um, truthfully, Mary Magdalene is supposed to have lived after she was um, exiled from Jerusalem after Jesus was crucified. And um, there's a church there, like there's a um, Dominican friars that say mass there every, every day. It's on the side of a mountain in St. Balm um, in the South of France. And so for, for some years, in those years of me being in the new age, I wanted to go to this uh, place on a personal pilgrimage. And so like, I went to Paris on a trip and then I decided that I would go there for a few days and just like take a personal spiritual sabbatical. And um, I think it was like day two or three that I uh, hiked up the mountain. It was like a couple miles where you have to hike up. And then like, it's the church is like in a cave on the side of a mountain. It's stunning. It's so beautiful. There's um, statues of her, there's statues of her, Jesus. Um, and it's literally inside a cave. And um, so day three, like I had gone every day, just sat, um, pray, you know, prayed. I don't know what I was praying then, now that I'm like <laughs> following the Bible, but like I was praying, you know, um, and lighting candles, you know, they had like shrines and candles. Uh -huh. And so um, day three, like I was sitting there and I audibly heard, um, you need to go back to the feet of Jesus. And I like, I'm the most rational, analytical, practical, not like I was in the new age world, but I was not a woo woo y like kind of, I don't know, like, do you know what I mean? Like, some I people, do, I get you. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, they seem like they're like high all the time. Like I was not that yeah. person. I was not that person. Um, so I did not regularly talk about hearing voices or anything like that. This, this struck me like so strange. I was like, I wasn't even praying for revelation on this. Um, so it wasn't something I was seeking. I didn't mm -hmm. understand it at the time, you know? And although there were statues all around me, of her at his feet. Um, and so I kind of questioned the voice, not out loud, but in my mind. And I heard, that's what I did. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. Oh my gosh, I could cry every time I say that. Wow. I've got goosebumps all over, like, I know. 
And so did so, you then, did you convert then right then and there or did it take you time? Uh, no, it took me a little time. I mean, I knew that that was significant and I, I, I was like, whoa, but I didn't tell anyone. Like I knew even my mom would be like, so excited to hear this, but like, I was so unsure of it all. Like I just didn't really understand it, but it was so radical that like, I knew something happened. Um, so I just did the rest of my trip. I went home to San Diego where I was living at the time. And, um, I remembered these two coaches that I, that I went to their event in San Diego, like a year and a half prior to male coaches. <laughs> I went to their event and on the last day they invited people to go to church and I rolled my eyes. I thought this was so crazy how like on a, at a secular coaching event <laughs> that they told people about their church. But they were also like multi-million dollar coaches. And so like I trusted their opinion because I knew they had created some success. Um, and when I came back, I searched for one of their emails to find out what church it was that they told us to go to. And so the next Sunday I went to church and um, I didn't, you know, I wasn't interested in going back, back to Catholic church. So I went to non-denominational Christian church. And I mean, worship I I would I would cry like I, I I would break down in worship and then the message um I'd be like mm, like triggered and it would be so like um it would be triggering to me like based on my background so but I kept going back because of the worship like he would he like had a hold on me just like I knew that he was like pursuing me or something was happening Cause I was like, why would I be this emotional? Like my tears would just roll down my face, uh, uh, listening to the worship songs. So I kept going and then, yeah, slowly I just, everything changed, like mm -hmm. everything changed. <laughs> and it's remarkable because you went from uh, all of that to now you're just totally letting God lead you. Yeah. Oh Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and what I is that like when you just completely surrender? Well, um, you know, there are, there are definitely human moments. I think that it's very important that we normalize that we get to have a relationship with God and relationship with Jesus. And we get to tell him, um, the, the things we desire and the things we're worried about and, um, when we don't feel him answering and we get to be very real with him. And I think that that would make it more accessible to more people because there's a lot of church, um, trauma, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people who grew up in churches that they don't resonate with and, or God was portrayed in a very condemning way. Mm -hmm. And that's not who he is. Like, that's not his character. Um, so, so now, I mean, I, I don't know. I really, I still struggle sometimes. There's things that I want in my life that haven't happened yet. And I do believe they're aligned with him. Right. So that's the first thing is he will begin to start to change your desires. Like, you know, once you become saved or give your life to Christ, like he, starts to work with you to change your desires. And so your desires become more like him or what he mm -hmm. wants for you or what his intention is for your life. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of waiting in pursuing God or being one of God's followers or, you know, like there's a lot of waiting and he does a lot of pruning and refining and healing people and preparing you for what he has for you in those waiting periods and those waiting periods can be really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that, you know, I still have those times and I just, you know, I tell him when I'm frustrated, but ultimately I really have come to know that like, it's never good when I just follow what I want. I still have had moments in the last three and a half years that I've done that in relationships or, in a little thing in life and I haven't consulted him first and really listen and ask the Holy spirit, please tell me what to do. And it just never really goes well. Like I'm, I, I don't know better. 
<laughs> you know, I just don't. He does. So I really learned that, like, I really don't want it. You know, I really, I like right now I'm praying for the man he has for me. Like I, I only want the man he has for me. And I'm saying to him, like, I really want that in my life, but, um, but I'm prepared to be single if it's not the one that you have for me. Like I will not settle, you know, for something that you don't, that you haven't ordained and you have not sent to me. So, uh, you know, that can be hard. Like that's Mm kind of radical for most people, but um, I realized that there's just more pain in choosing for myself. Mm -hmm. I love that. The thing that I want to emphasize that you said too, Tara, is the relationship. And I grew up in a Lutheran church, Missouri Synod. I'm actually Catholic now. I converted because that's what my husband was and our children. And it was just the the right church for the right fit for us and our values Mm -hmm. and our morals and everything. Um, so we joined the Catholic church, you know, I joined as an adult, but growing up, it was so legalistic and it was so much Mm -hmm. fear and guilt that was instilled in us that and shame that it was a, it was a Mm turnoff. It was, you know, and it wasn't until I really discovered that it's about having a relationship with him. He doesn't want to condemn me. Mm -mm. He loves me unconditionally and he's the only source of unconditional love. Totally. Except maybe maybe my dogs, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> the dogs are sent from him though, taught by him. <laughs> they are. I swear. I swear they are. I so anyway, that really resonated with me when you said that about the relationship. And it really is, you know, resting ourselves and putting everything at his feet and letting him take take charge, really. And and respecting that and just giving it to him to lead us and guide us. And I'm not a patient person. So like Mm -hmm. you, that is something that I definitely struggle with, but I'm also one of those people that I'll just jump in and take charge. And that's never a good thing. (laughs) It does not ever, ever turn out the way that I think it should have. So I've learned the same lesson that you've learned, but coming from a different perspective, right? Like I didn't ever have that break up with him and go to this new age side. But I've, I've had those experiences just on my own journey, my own faith journey. And I think the only thing that helped me and really saved me per se was that relationship component. Yeah. I mean, I think that's huge. Like, I think that, um, it's such a great message, like, People need to know that you can tell him anything. There's nothing that he doesn't know about you. One, um, there's nothing you've done. This is so important for people to know. Like there's nothing that you've done that can take his love away from you. Anything, nothing. Mm -hmm. You You can bring him anything. And there's nothing that you've done that are that make you too far gone or unlovable or not welcome. Um, he's just, he is pursuing you, whether you know it or not. And he, he just wants you. Um, and you, you get to tell him everything. Like, I think that, that, you know, that's really key. Like you get to be frustrated, you get to be sad you know, all the emotions, like that's one of the reasons that God sent Jesus, right? Because then he was in human form and Jesus could experience emotion. And so he knows, you know, he knows what it's like. So we get to be honest about that. We do not have to be perfect to be a follower of Christ. We can, we should, we should strive, right? He does give us guidelines and we should strive but we will always be fallible and we'll always be imperfect. Like Mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. Tara, I love this conversation so much. And I know that you have like something, um, like an idea of something, maybe he's calling you to, but Mm -hmm. I would love for you to share that because maybe some, maybe there's someone listening that is ready to, you know, reach out to you and tell their story too. But I know that, you're really kind of taking a step step back, a sabbatical from your work right now, Mm -hmm. which, you know, God's richly blessed you and you can do that, which is so wonderful. But what is that 
potential project that there's a little flame, yeah. a little spark inside you right now about? Well, one of the things that I've learned in my journey so far of three and a half years uh, since I was saved, I used to hate that term when I was in the new age as well, but really now I get it. Um, and one of the things that I've learned is that uh, he, he will, um, he will be guide. He is guiding you all the time and kind of like giving you ideas and telling you what to do to live out your purpose and what he, what he wants, what he wants done. Um, and so it's up to us to listen. So I've become better and I constantly working. That's how I, I spend time with him every day so that I can hear him more clearly and like what he wants from me. And, um, I really do like, that is my only prayer that he tells me what even more clearly what my purpose is, like, what is my, what is the destiny he has on my life? Like, how do I glorify him period? And, um, and so most recently, like you can tell this topic is very important to me just because like I came from the new age and then now have like, you know, just a strong testimony of his love that there are so many other people that are also um, that he's pursuing and that they are, they are waking up. So if you're listening to this and you've already, you have a testimony and you've already given your life to Christ and you just resonate, I would love to talk to you because I'm going to potentially, let's see what he does, put something together where, you know, it's sort of more of an organized thing where we'll all come together and tell our individual testimonies and then have some sort of summit or something where a bunch of people can listen. Can you imagine, right? Like someone being able to tune in and listen to 20 or 50 different testimonies of how they went from following the new age to Jesus, you know, having an encounter with Jesus, like that's going to be very powerful. And one of the things that he does ask us to do in the gospel is to be the, his hands and feet, right. To evangelize for him. And so, uh, you know, potentially that's something that's been on my heart for a while. It's like this, there's even a hashtag if you're listening on Instagram, new age to Jesus. Like it is a thing. Like, yeah, it is a thing. And you can go there even on YouTube, I think, and you can hear so many testimonies. And so, yeah, it would just like, I would like to just kind of bring more of us together so that we are um, working together, perhaps even when someone maybe needs to come to us, we know where to send them to someone's testimony, you know, like we kind of come together a little bit more to be his hands and feet. Yeah. I love that. And so where can the listeners find you? Um, probably Instagram is the best place um, for me. It's at seven with the number seven figure femme, F-E-M-M-E. -E. Um, so that's the best way to get me personally. You can DM me there. Um, Facebook as well under my name. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And, you know, it's funny because I want to say you are love and light. Like, I know that's a new age <laughs> thing, but it's like, you really do radiate love and light. And I think, yeah. you know, Jesus is our light and it's okay to yeah. say that even though we're not new age. So <laughs> totally. Well, I mean, that's like another good point in the deception of the enemy. There's a lot of things that were hijacked that essentially our scripture like that's a whole nother rabbit hole we could go down but it's something I've talked about a lot where a lot of the manifest most actually all of the law of attraction and manifestation principles essentially are biblical and they were hijacked by the enemy um to not give reference to God's word so yeah you're right love and yeah. light is definitely God <laughs> 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 oh gosh. All right. Well, Tara, thank you so much for being here. And listeners, if you enjoyed our conversation and found it helpful, will you please share it with friends, family members, coworkers, coaches, anybody that you think might be inspired by it? Because let's face it, we live in a world that it, we're faced with super deep challenges every single day. And we're inundated with evil, like every time you turn on the TV. So if we can start spreading more positive words of wisdom related to scripture and Jesus, then let's do so. All right. Amen. Thanks for being here and we'll see you all next week.